Let's take a look at one of our favorite sets, the Marks number 3402 Johnny Tremaine. This rare set was fully licensed by Disney and on store shelves in 1957. And very true to the Walt Disney series. <laughs> Over here, for instance, we have the tavern. Now, it's true that that tavern and the flag that goes with it do appear in other Revolutionary War sets. The flag is only in, I think, the 3404 and this one. And the Tin Litho building, which is about seven inches high, is in all of the four Marx Revolutionary War sets. The British come in sets of 12, and we'll show you what that set of 12 looks like. There are two kneeling firing, two standing firing, an officer, a single rider, three marching, and three guys that are running. They're very beautiful figures, so three sets of those means you get 36 British in a set. The Colonials get the same number in a group of 12, but there's a secret to the Colonials. They cheated a little bit. Their horsemen are extra, so they actually get 39 figures in the Revolutionary War sets. Uh, you get three marching, a drummer, a flag man, you gotta watch that because that flag is a little thin. A kneeling firing, two standing firing, uh, an officer who's either pointing for the artillery to, to fire or he's pointing for the firing line. And the final two are a downward stabbing and running with flintlock. The colonials have a superior force, surprisingly, to the British, but there's a reason for that. Turning back from Concord, the British beat a hasty retreat. Not all day long, the colonial forces grew on either side of them to the point that they were overwhelming. Boston was only 14 miles away. It was a warm, sunny day that April 19, 1775. But under heavy fire, the colonials had been warned, and that's where the great character figures come in. Uh, there are, let's see, Paul Revere, Johnny Tremaine, his girlfriend in the series was called Scylla, so she's a non-historical character, and then there are two of the original configurers of the Declaration of Independence. In our little setup, Sam Adams is discussing with James Otis poignant parts of the Declaration of Independence, and you can see one of them stood up a little quickly. He's toppled over his chair. Which brings me to the Rev War accessory. The PL-875, Marx called them the Rev War accessories. This is a dandy little group that includes a stack of rifles, three stools, one of which you saw knocked over a moment ago, two lanterns, which we have one on the uh, tavern sign that we made for the tavern that was historically present in Lexington called Buckman's Tavern. There's a bench, two of them, uh, the two lanterns that I mentioned. There is a tall, ornate chair, which when you add two uh, smaller pieces to the bottom of the, uh, the legs, it becomes a rocking chair. The little pieces are fairly hard to find. Mostly the Rev War accessories, the ones that we've been showing you, are in a maroon rose color. There are two colors in there and they're styrated to where the two plastics are mixed. Very beautiful, no doubt about it. Now outside of Buckman's Tavern, there's a group of accessories that are really very finely done. You get a nice stone wall, and you get these two end caps, which are made of plastic. The stone walls came with a set of rocks, uh, along with rock piles. Uh, there's a lot of configurations. A lot of guys usually put those walls up in front of the tavern and kind of make a fortress out of it, which it really wasn't. It was really sitting on a main avenue. You get six pieces of white fencing. You can really help define a historical place uh, at a historical time. Uh, over here, you can see in our battle road, we got all of the British running guys running home, of course. <laughs> They are engaged by colonials on either side of the road, and they have a small encampment over there. Let's take a look at the bags that are fairly unique in this set. Here they are. You can see that they're brown striped bags, 
and uh, the Colonials come in a, I, I just love this, Rev War Soldiers. Now my set had three bags for the red coats in it, and I love that. Apparently, sometimes they just came in an unmarked bag like this. If your bags are all marked, that's great. There's the Rev War accessories bag, Rev War cannons. This is the beautiful gold Marks Rev War cannon. It is indeed a Rev War cannon. It comes with a, an ornate barrel mounted on a carriage that I think is rather ornate, and so are the wheels. They've got a, just a really neat um, design to them. And this is a firing cannon. It has a pull to shoot firing mechanism. It works like this. Spring fire. The other thing it has is a small bucket with a hook. And it hooks onto the carriage in back here. A lot of times, if you're buying one of these used, you want to watch that that hook is still there. But uh, what a beautiful cannon. Just absolutely a collector's item, and it comes in each and every Rev War set. Johnny Tremaine only has one other cannon, and it's the black uh, PL-411 shell firing cannon. Uh, we've got that set up over there on the Colonial side. The box, you have your choice of two, uh, assuming there were two available. This beautiful red one is my favorite, but it also did come in a flip-flop of black. Everything that's red is black, and um, it's, a, it's less common to find, but that's okay with me because I like my red set anyway. Uh, Johnny Tremaine, uh, Walt Disney copyrighted production by Marks, beautiful set, number 3402. If you ever have a chance, I'd grab it. Actually, I didn't grab it. It was a little expensive. It took a long time, but now I've grabbed it. Now this. Go to PlacetMagazine.com where you'll find all the latest informational DVDs, the latest books, Kirby's and exciting skill. back issues. Playset Magazine is devoted to playsets by Marx and other toys of the atomic era. So join us, won't you? Playset Magazine cares about you, and remember... Playsetmagazine.com